Okay, so welcome back, and let's talk about cause and effect. And so let me ask you, which side of the equation are you on? Are you at cause for everything in your life, or are you at the effect of things happening to you? Mark Twain said, 20 years from now you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore and dream. You see, no matter where we are in our lives or our careers, we either have the results that we want or we have the reasons as to why we've not achieved the things that we want to achieve. The fact is that most people will give you reasons for not yet having achieved what they want. Reasons why they've not been on a holiday in the last five years. Whether it's a bad economy, being laid off, illness or whatever is going on in their life. These are simply just reasons for why they're not satisfied in the area of being or reasons for not being the way that they want things to be. Now, imagine that you knew the day where you're going to move on from this life. Imagine lying down five minutes before it was time to pass on and you think to yourself, I would have, I could have, I should have. How many people do you know that have uttered those words or something similar? I could have been a contender, they say. But that thing happened to me or that ruined my life. You see, those are simply just reasons for not having it all. Now, very importantly, I want to be very clear at this point and say that this doesn't mean that the person is to blame or that they're at fault. Please bear that in mind. The idea of finding the reasons is not to say that You or your client is at fault or to blame. It's not about beating yourself up. Now as we imagine that moment before passing on and you think about the things that you've not achieved and the reasons for not doing so, I'm sure you'll agree that that's probably not very satisfying and it's going to be pretty disempowering. In fact, you could almost feel like you were cheated. Now I appreciate that there's no evidence to say that you're totally responsible for whatever happens in your life and that you know you aren't always a total cause for everything in our lives. I do however suggest that in many cases having a good plan and implementing that plan by taking the right actions that results can be achieved. Furthermore any feedback and learnings that we get from not achieving our intended goal simply serves to empower us and helps us to hone that action plan into one that actually going to lead us to the success that we want. Thomas Edison famously replied that he didn't fail 10,000 times, but rather found 10,000 ways not to do it when he was asked about all his previous failures in creating the light bulb. Now, in many cases, people will actually blame everything and everybody around them as to why they've not succeeded. Many people are professional victims. And they love to play the blame or the victimhood game. Having these reasons for not having achieved the goal, well, it's not all bad. It's merely a case of perception. Once we understand what these reasons are, we can then change our focus and create a proper action plan to achieve what we want and what we desire. And this can be achieved by coaching and helping your client to overcome or navigate the stumbling blocks on that path to success. As William Jennings Bryan said, he said, destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. It's not something to be waited for, but rather something to be achieved. And so, let's just focus on the cause side of the dichotomy. Let's pretend that we were at cause for wherever we are in our life. Now, you may argue and say something like, well, I didn't ask for the car accident and I didn't ask to be shot. Or whatever bad thing could have happened in our lives. I'm only asking you to imagine that we were at cause for everything that's happened and wherever we are in our lives. And that the rest are merely just reasons for not having it. The fact is that we are where we are based on our conscious and our unconscious decisions that led us up to this point. Here's an example. Let's imagine a client was involved in a bank robbery and they were held up at arm gunpoint and now they suffer with PTSD. 
Now, I know it sounds a little bit extremist, and I can assure you I've worked with much worse things with my clients. The fact is that the client was at that particular bank at that particular time based on their conscious and unconscious decisions. Please remember, like I said before, it's not about blame and it's not about fault. It merely points out that we are where we are based on our conscious and unconscious decisions. And this is one of the fundamental things that I talk to my clients about because what this is going to give us, it helps us to get rid of all the reasons for not having what we want and helps us to be empowered so that we can create the results that we want. Now we can take the learnings from the experience to help us in the future. I realize this is quite uncomfortable for some people to accept. Again, there's no evidence to suggest that we're always in control of what happens. But what it does do, it frees us up from the blame and the victimhood mentality to focus on what it is that we truly want. And this is a much more empowering position to be in and a springboard to achieve the results that we want. When something's not working, we can change our course of action. As Albert Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So let's see what's working, what's not working. If it's not working and we have reasons for things not working, let's learn from those reasons and let's accept cause and create the results that we want leading to empowerment. Right, so that's cause and effect, and in the next section we'll be looking at the NLP communication model.